Image georeferencing is a common task in ArcMap if you're working with either historical map data or architect drawings or field data collection on using paper and pen. There's a lot of these situations where we'll get an image, be it a scanned image or a digital image, and we then need to assign coordinates to that image are to display it together with our data or to be able to read off coordinates from that uh, image. So this process of assigning coordinates to a non-coordinate image is what we call georeferencing. The principle is relatively simple. We have a raw image, scanned map, historical map, L photograph, satellite image, whatever. And we then need a source of some true coordinates. This source of, co of coordinates has to be somewhere, something that can generate coordinates for any location we're interested in. What we then do is that we, on our raw image, identify some locations and then find out what coordinate those locations have using our source of of coordinates that would be typically be a vector data set um, or a map that has coordinates on it and we'll then generate what we call GCP's ground control points that is points on our image that we know what the real coordinate is once we have our GCP's we can go to the next process that is called a uh, rectification where we take our raw image and then wrap it around those coordinates. This rectification process is basically a transformation of the image and we talk about different orders of transformation. A first order transformation is a rotation and a scaling. It's also called an affine transformation. So no called, um, scaling um, or no uh, we can do scaling, but all pixels are scaled the same. That's what we call an affine transformation. So that's suitable if the data is not stretched in any way. If the data is stretched or distorted through use of a lens, such as on an aerial photograph, or if you're taking a picture of a map, then the data will be distorted through the distortion of that lens and we need to use a higher order of transformation a higher order of rectification second order that will do a polynomium so that we can have one transformation in the center of the polynomial and another scaling in the edges so they'll scale differently and if we need to do even more complex um, if it's been a data set that has been hanging or might just be um, a bad old map, we'll uh, probably need to use an even higher transformation. In our map, what we do is that we um, start it by loading our raw image. So if I go in our map and um, I'll load in my image that did not have any coordinates on it. Um, I need a new folder connection because it's not a sorry a new folder connection because it's not in my existing data. So I just need to go in and I put it down in pictures. So I'll uh, sorry I'll create this folder connection and in there I have a hook post JPEG. So this is a set when I load it. It says oop there's no coordinate says on it. It can load it finally enough. And here's our image, and what we can see is that we've used it to go out and register where there are posters um, in the field. So we've been out using this as a data collection tool, and we now want to assign coordinates to this. There are two things to note here. One of them is that these yellow dots, these were the ones I created in our video on preparing data for uh, pen and paper field registration. So these are some ground control points. I know exactly what the coordinates are of all of these points. So I can easily 
use them for referencing. Um, we also have buildings and a road network here. So there's lots of possible data sets for doing referencing of this data. I will start out by loading the ones that we always be able to access. So buildings and things like that. Um, and I should have some in this folder here and I will have some buildings like that and uh, I should have some traffic that's uh, technique traffic um, and some road lines here Oh dear, they're not located at the same time. Oh, well, that's not surprising because if you look at the coordinates down in the right left corner, you can see that we are somewhere close to equator. I think this is the equator corner here. Um, so, and Denmark is not at equator, LS. Um, so, if I press my zoom to everything, you will see some small data up there. That's my roads, and you can see my image file down there is a little dot so if i now zoom a bit closer in on this data set here and zoom into where our university is um, we are getting ready to work with our um, our tools so i've done this i made my image ready. that's fine and i can start this georeferencing tool the georeferencing tool to get hold of that I would go in, uh, right click in the gray area here and say georeferencing. Or I could go up on a customized toolbar georeferencing. That's whatever you find is the most uh, convenient. And I now have my georeferencing tool here. What I now have to do is that I have to zoom in to the area that has the coordinates that are going to be assigned to the image. So I'm not going to zoom into the image. Um, the, if I right click on this one and said zoom to, I'll go to the image and that's down by equator. No, I want to zoom to the area that the image is going to be located when it gets its coordinates. So I'll zoom in and I know this is approximately the university area. So something like this, I think if we compare this go zoom to layer here uh, we have quite a lot north of it, so I'll return to my area from before and I'm using uh, the previous and recent these here, extent to move back and forth and I'll just zoom out a wee bit more. Uh, oh, that was a bit too much to get a reasonable something like this so now I think my areas match reasonably so what I do now is that I from this uh, menu here the georeferencing menu can go up and say fit to display okay. so what that does is that it moves my image up into my display area so now we got our image and we've got our buildings and road networks. And what we then have to do is that we have to align those two by creating these GCP points. So these ground control points, to establish them, we first click on an identifiable location on the image and then at the same place in our reference data. So it can be difficult to see, but this roundabout down here is this roundabout here. So if I just do a bit of a zoom so I have a good data view of those two, I can see the center of the road and the center of the road. So a approach to a point could be to say add control point and then click at where the road meets and that should be the same location as there. So I've clicked at the two locations. And 
what ArcMap does is that it matches those two locations together. Uh, so we have now those one location match. I then need to find some more good locations that I could use. And the question is what, what is a good location? Basically road centers at road crosses are a good location. Buildings can be a bit problematic because they have a height and the aerial photograph will never be exactly above it. So there'll be a bit of distortion as between the height of the roof seen from the airplane and the footprint of the roof which is what we are working with. So if you can get a good road network that is a good choice of data. Um, I have another roundabout here which is that roundabout there. Um, I could use them. There is one little uh, problem and that is you should try and distribute your points as much as possible throughout your um, your image show. Having two points relatively close um, can give some uh, nasty distortions. But I have a road crossing here which is the same as that road crossing up there. So if I choose the zoom to these areas See, this is the big road down there, and that's the little one up there. And I can, um, there's two roads, there's a bicycle lane and a pedestrian lane. So I'll now take and click on my bicycle lane. And on my bicycle lane in my data source here. So now it's got two points that it can start working on and matching up. Um, and as you can see, my image has now become relatively um, correctly located. So the roads and the buildings on the image and on the data set match relatively okay. Um, The question is, how many points do we need? Well, the basic rule is that you need the order, the power of the order plus two points. So if it's a first order transformation, you need one in the power of two, that's two. No, not, it's one. So the question is, how many data points do you need? Well, the basic rule is that you need the order of the transformation, the power of the order of the transformation plus two. So if you have a first order and the power of one, it's one plus two, that's three points. So at the minimum, you need three points to do a first order transformation. If you have a, want to do a second order transformation, you need two, the power of two, that's four plus two, that's six. And if you want to do a third order transformation, you'll need power of two or three that's nine plus two that's eleven points as a minimum so use that formula that will tell you how many points you need at minimum it is a good idea to use more than a minimum because if you start using more than the minimum it will also be able to give you an estimate of the error so basically if you're using more than this formula you'll get an error calculation so we'll need at least three points and I could continue in ArcMap um, using my roads and buildings but I've, this data set has been made with specific purpose of being able to do this so it has already got um, some data sets that I can use so in my down in my raster demo the regional raster demo I had a folder called GCP. If I load this one here, these are my points that I have made especially for this purpose. So that my data points 
uh, my yellow dots on my aerial photograph they ma match exactly to those small green marks um, and uh, I can therefore zoom to these ah, there it is um, so I'll need to center my center of my dot so line that point and it will snap automatically to this point so that was one point um, I can zoom out and zoom in on another coordinate so I'll zoom in over here and I can repeat that process finding that point and clicking on it so I have now started to get and of course um, some more points I've got four points now and um, that is one more than the three I need for doing a affine transformation so up here I can start getting some information I can uh, ask for this view link here and it was this one out here and what that does it tells me what is the error on my data set so we have here my source data and my coordinate data and the residuals of the transformation and I can uh, then see what type of error am I getting um, on this if I'm using a first order transformation if I had only got if I just got rid of one of these parts let's say I've turned this one off um, I have a um, a residual of zero because three points can always be matched exactly to three point so that's not really useful for me so I, it's always a good idea to have at least one or two more than what you need for that order transformation um, so if I want to add some more data just uh, zoom to layer and I as I said, it's a good idea to distribute your points. Uh, so I haven't really got anything over here. So I'll add that part there. And give that a link. From there to there. And I can then go back and look at my link table. And see what, how it's going with my... Um, residuals if I um, need to go higher so this is my uh, my average here up here total root mean square error so that's at the one meter at the moment um, which is probably fine for my purpose if I needed to go to a higher order I need more points I've got five points and I need to go to second order I need at least six points so I just go back and add a final point uh, do it out in the lake it looks like it needs a point out here so I can now add this point here and um, if I now go to my viewing here I'm able to change my order to a second order transformation because I got exactly six points and two to the power of two plus two is six so if I say now I'll get a residual of zero because it will match all the points exactly um, and I will be doing a second order I don't want to do that because I know that this data set is a first order transformation it, I have simply printed it out and loaded it back so I know that there's no distortion that is not a first order so I, everything should be possible to handle by using a scaling a movement and a rotation an affine first order transformation so I will stick at with my first order transformation and go up to this menu here and go and say rectify the rectifier then does the process that says my output cell should be 0 0.5, 0 0.35. I'll just say that's fine. I'll just leave it 0 0.3. My resampling, we have got 
different possibilities. They have the nearest neighbor, a billionaire or cubic. Um, nearest neighbor, that is when we twist our image, we'll need to assign some new colors to the new cells. Nearest neighbor, you should always use if you're working with scanned maps. So black and white, or where we do not have continuous colors. If you have images that we only want to look at, we should use a billionaire uh, or cubic, which is the best spot, but looks best, but a bit slower. If you have satellite data, it's a bit of a question because, in one way, it would be most obvious to use a billionaire um, chain spot. Often, when we're using a satellite image, we are interested in the original reflection values and therefore if it's for using it for the base of doing classification processes you should not use a billionaire you should stay with um, your nearest neighbor or at least be aware that you are changing the original satellite data when you're doing your um, your uh, transformation I would then say that it is generally best practice that you should do your not do your re, re, uh, your rectification before your classification. Do your classification first, and then do your rect, uh, rectification. But if you have ground truth data, you'll need your data in a rectified version, and then you are into this dilemma: which one to choose? There is arguments for and against both. But in this case, I'll use a billionaire, and it will ask me where to save it. And I don't like saving images in databases, so I just save it down in my raster data folder, my raster folder, uh, raster demo, and call it. Oops, go one up. It's just a folder it's asking for, raster, like that, and call it like that, and say okay. So now it's done. It, it's processing with pyramids and things like that and I can now get rid of my image here because that's the one that didn't have coordinates on it so I can uh, load up my rectified image a book poster thing here and hey presto it locates itself and I can say zoom to layer and um, all is well um, I have my coordinates I have my roads and if I add my buildings you see that they will align uh, perfectly with my image so that was the process of georeferencing an image and of course in this case it was relatively easy because I had created these additional GCP points so I could ensure that um, I had my points that I could use uh, which is an important thing to have if um, you're using uh, paper and pen field registration then put on some GCP points on your map before printing it because it will make it much easier to deal with it later. But if you're working with historical images or architect drawings, of course, you do not have that extra luxury of preparing the data for later geo referencing. So, that was all. Bye.